Rahil, uh, something about the grand test. Like, I wanted to ask how yeah. frequently you gave the grand test and how much the marks did they, did they affect you? Like, uh, whether the rank you came across or the scores or the number of corrects, did, did they affect you or you were like open with the mindset that no, uh, I'm just giving it to, you know, have a practice of how frequently you give? Yeah. So, I used to give uh, grand test one, once per week. And the thing is, okay. initially I did approach it with an open mind, like I will not get demotivated by the results. But then, some way or the other, it does tend to bug you a little bit. But then you have to overcome that feeling. True. How many correct questions you used to, you know, uh, get in the grand test, and how much you scored in the real exam? Yeah. So uh, this is very funny, actually. I never scored above like 450, 460 in any of the grand tests. But then in the final exam, I scored 600 out of 800. So that's the thing yeah. is grand test from any app. I Maro was the toughest, but then if you go into yeah. any app, this grand tests are made yeah. to be really tough. Made they to be really, tough. Otherwise, if those grand tests are like just like the exams are easier, then it will send you in a sense of complacency. You'll become very complacent. Oh, I know everything. It's fine. True. It's supposed true, to true, be true. tough. I remember yeah. in one of those grand tests, there was uh, there was a question on Axo syndrome. Just, just because okay. I have read it, that does not mean everyone has read it and it's not even required at yeah. this level. But then that's the point. They are made to be tough so that people yeah, go and read. Tough, yeah. The thing is like, I used to approach grand tests in the sense that I used to, I had to find out what was wrong in my preparation. So suppose if I got this, to, I, used to, the, every, I think every grand test gives you a subject wise result. Like you got, you got yeah, this many definitely. questions wrong from this subject. So that was the only aim of me giving a grand test. I never did guesswork. I never uh, like, but then it trained me to sit there for three hours. That's the entire purpose yeah. to train yourself the to sit purpose, there for yeah. three hours, develop that endurance. See, that's the thing. Now, if you sweat more in training, you bleed less in war. It's a very famous quote. Yes, that's and a, this that's applies a, that's here a as very well. Nice one. Absolutely. This applies here as Definitely. well. The results are, I, but I will still say, like, if you are scoring less than 100, uh, that means you are somewhere lagging on the theory part. But then, uh, if you are scoring above 100, if you are getting above 100 questions right, that means, like, okay, yeah. you have read the theory, but then you have to brush up your skill, you have to brush up your knowledge here and there. So, so guys, uh, that's a really good message. Like, so the grand test, you have to focus. Like, if you're getting less than 100, then you have to go back to the concept. Either if it's the concept you're getting wrong, or if the questions are the fact based, you have to find a way to, you know, cram it up or something like that. And one more thing, you have to give the grand test with the mindset that these are 200 new questions you're learning, and you're learning to solve it in a new yeah, way because you have the answers. Absolutely. And you don't have to worry about the scores because even, uh, guys, see, Rahil used to get around 450 in the grand test. But uh, in the real exam, he got 600. So definitely the marks in the grand test should matter only when it is less than 100 questions correct or if you are yes. consistently getting less marks. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I think it should be fair enough if you are getting 110, 120 questions right and the mindset is correct that you, ha you can do well in the exam. Mm -hmm.